I made a few changes to my watering system in the past week. Uh, first of all, to make sure that even if there's a major error with the pump, that it's impossible for it to wet the floor. Um, but also I improved the pump because it broke uh, just before I was about to leave the country, typically. Um, and in the next video in this series, I'm going to make it part of the Internet of Things, uh, using parts that cost only about £10 in the UK, maybe even cheaper in America. So, uh, watch and learn. To make sure that even if the pump stayed on constantly through some sort of electrical error, I decided to place all the plants into a tray which would then have a uh, nozzle connected to it, which could then drain down into the larger water reservoir. This cheap plastic nozzle from a DIY shop will fit the silicone tube that I'm using, more or less. This is the tray which will hold the plants. I need to make a hole in it which will very tightly and closely fit that nozzle. I used the end of a hot glue gun to weld the plastic of the nozzle to the plastic of the tray and I also made a, another layer of waterproofing by duct taping over the top of the nozzle. Looks fairly watertight to me. This grill rack will raise the plants up a little bit so that if there's any standing water in the tray they won't be left set, sitting in it for a long period of time. That's the pipe which will run into the main water reservoir. Here's the system set up using a 5 litre water bottle as a reservoir. So there's a pump in there pumping water into the tray and then it's gradually draining back down into the same bottle. You can see the eye of the vampire is blinking slightly. That's the water level sensor. So I have the whole thing reconfigured to use both moisture sensors and only one pump. So one moisture sensor regulates the water level in the tray and the other one senses the level of moisture in the soil. So if either one of the moisture sensors detects moisture the pump will turn off. If neither of them detect moisture the pump is on. So that's quite a simple um, program compared to what I anticipated writing um, and it's actually regulating the level of water in that tray very effectively. It's about a week since I installed the plant watering system um, in its current setup. Um, the problem I've had with it, um, it may have been uh, noticeable on the last video I made when uh, that eye was blinking as the uh, moisture sensor is just beginning to uh, detect that the plants are drying out. The problem is that the pump which is down here in the reservoir it's that pump there. Um, the problem is I think that the motor has got damaged because uh, the moisture sensor switched it on and off so rapidly because it was kind of on the edge of detecting dryness. That is, so the, the figure, the, the threshold was kind of jumping up and down so rapidly um, it's probably damaged the motor. And what I should have done back then is uh, basically, I was going to do a video about debouncing, but I'll talk about it now. Um, I should have changed the speed of the actual loop of the Arduino uh, to far slower, I say maybe a second delay between each loop, um, and that would have made the whole system run far more stably. It probably would have pumped water up this tube more consistently earlier on during the sort of dry stage. Um, and it will also have avoided putting stress on the motor by, it's kind of like turning a light switch on and off rapidly. It's not a good idea, it's going to cause sparks between the contacts um, and shorten the life of the light switch considerably. Um, so I'm going to do that now and I'm also going to either repair that pump or fit a, a, a far better pump onto it. This motor is very definitely dead. I'd hope that maybe it was uh, just a loose contact around here or something but 
it seems like it's uh, it's genuinely gone. I could always, of course, swap over to this motor, um, but then probably the same would happen very rapidly. Um, so I'm just going to upgrade to a, a proper motor. Luckily, I have this ten-pound aquarium pump uh, that I bought on eBay, which I actually bought as a coolant pump for the uh, very large spindle for my CNC machine which is going to sit right there um, but I guess I can just reorder that it seems like a very cheap and powerful pump the only thing I needed to connect this to um, normal uh, silicon tubing was this three-quarter inch BSP uh, hose tail connector um, and this is listed as a quarter inch but it's basically for six millimeter silicon tubing just to give you a teaser of what's going to be in the next video about this system incidentally I just bought these uh, Wi-Fi modules uh, for the Arduino I had to change to 3.3 volt Arduinos to, to run those uh, at least I could have bought a 3.3 volt to 5 volt uh, step converter but there's no point in doing that um, so basically I'm going to add these uh, add one of these Wi-Fi modules um, to that um, because it occurred to me while I was abroad um, that it would have been useful to know what was going on with the plants but also just while I was sitting watching it it's hard to know if it's likely the pump is going to turn on soon, if the system is running okay, etc, etc. So essentially what I can do with the Wi-Fi module um, is, uh, is send data to the server that my uh, website is running on, just uh, on a, a normal commercial host um, in the UK. Um, I'll be able to actually put values from this thing into uh, my SQL table um, running on a Linux server um, and then I'll be able to kind of draw graphs uh, just monitor the data from there because the uh, pump is a mains component I found this relay uh, in my parts box um, which has a 12 volt coil uh, but can switch 16 amps at uh, 250 volts mains voltage in the UK is uh, 240 and 16 amps is what an entire uh, ring circuit for uh, a room can supply so that's certainly high enough rated what I'm going to do now is attach these jump leads to the relay so that I can attach it to the breadboard via one of those MOSFETs that was running the pump originally but the diode here this is 1N 4005 to be honest I don't know that much about the diodes and the difference between them but I just know that that one will be just about right uh, what that is there for is to uh, short circuit any uh, back EMF when that coil switches off back into the coil itself uh, basically it's just a, a protection for uh, the rest of this circuit uh, when I plug it in to make sure that a very high voltage doesn't shoot back through that MOSFET or back through the uh, switching into the rest of the circuit or it could disrupt the uh, power to the Arduino as well if nothing else so that's pretty important some relays will actually have a built-in diode um, but you know I don't know I don't think this one does because the coil is not polarized so this is very important to add that. I just uh, soldered those joints. You can see that the negative side of the diode is uh, pointing towards the positive, well, what I decided shall be the positive contact on the relay. Um, that's because the back EMF is always in the opposite polarity to the voltage the coil's being driven with. Um, now I just connected the negative side of the relay to the uh, to the drain on the uh, MOSFET and the positive side to the positive from the actual power supply um, 
coming into the board. My finger is wet and I'm touching the moisture sensor. You can hear the, you should be able to hear the relay clicking as the uh, one of the eye lights over there switches on and off. So I think that's a success. I just need to change the program uh, to make the relay stay on for longer uh, once it's been triggered and also I need to add the main side of the circuit to switch the pump on and off. So now the uh, main side of the circuit is complete I uh, this is where the two mains cables enter the box one of them has the plug and the other has plug socket which I'm going to plug the pump into um, obviously this is the one that goes into the wall um, and the active part of it is the uh, the two live wires one from the incoming plug and one from the outgoing plug go to the normally open pins on the relay here so when the relay is activated it joins those two together and we'll turn the pump on. Um, the two neutral wires I've just soldered together and then heat shrunk over the exposed joint um, and uh, the earth wires I've joined them together and bolted them down to the uh, this bracket I was using as a cable clamp. It's quite important to use the earth uh, cable within the mains wire because this enclosure is metal. Um, so if there is some sort of uh, bad connection or something and these live, connect live wires touch the metal box you want to have that earth um, so uh, it would probably be less dangerous, it's not ideal. Um, I also had to upgrade the power supply to a 12 volt one because it turns out that although the relay was making a noise uh, before um, it wasn't actually making a proper connection in the circuit so it needed 12 volts uh, so I should learn to uh, trust what I read on the side of components um, so I'm just going to demonstrate well um, I'm just going to plug in the pump and uh, or a light maybe and, and just demonstrate that this works before I test this with the uh, mains voltage I decided to uh, wrap the live contacts in electrical tape and just uh, glue down the relay. The lamp at the back is connected to the uh, is plugged into the plug socket that's coming out of this enclosure here. Oh there you go. Hang on just wait for it to go off. So what I'm doing is I'm simulating the moisture sensor being held in water so it's, it's basically a resistance sensor so it's measuring the conductivity of whatever it's in so obviously if I place it on something metal then that's the same thing as it kind of triggers the circuit as if it was in water um, although the resist resistance of the metal will be a lot less um, but basically the circuit is on a five second delay so the the lamp will never be off for less than five seconds or on for less than five seconds but when I take it off the uh, the metal of the drill now the lamp turns on this is basically the same it's demonstrating that the pump would be on but the pump needs to be immersed in water so I didn't really want to test it with that and if I touch it on here there'll be a slight delay and then the light will turn off I just fitted the uh, the pipe which was on the smaller pump onto the hose tail fitting on the bigger pump. I had to wrap some uh, electrical tape around it to increase the diameter a bit but this isn't going to be a high pressure job anyway um, so that should be sufficient. I'm just going to place that in the water and uh, cover over the, uh, the tank again I installed the moisture sensor back here in uh, one of the drier segments of the planter um, and the other moisture sensor 
acts as a level sensor to stop the water level getting too high. I set it quite high just to hope that the the water will fill up to that point and then then very rapidly wet the the other sensor over there. And the setup is very simple. Uh, whenever one of the sensors is triggered with moisture, the pump will switch off. Um, so at the moment, as soon as I as soon as I plug this in, the pump will start, um, and I'll see how quickly it fills up the uh, reservoir with the plants in. The pump's switched on now, and water is uh, water is going through that tube there. And it's starting to fill up the reservoir with the plants inside. And as it's filling up, it's gradually draining out of this hole here. Um, and eventually when the pump switches off, all the water will drain off through that hole. It's been filling for a couple of minutes now and soon the water level will reach the moisture sensor here and will turn off. As always, I hope you found that interesting. If you want to see more of the same sort of stuff, uh, open source electronic products, which hopefully will be useful, um, please do like and subscribe. And do watch out for my next video because I'm soon going to receive one of these through the post, and that will let me connect the uh, watering system with the uh, MySQL database. Um, which will basically be the start of a, a networked watering system that will let me see the status of the uh, plants from anywhere in the world. Um, and also, sooner or later, I'm going to put out a video where I finish this CNC machine. Um, I have the, uh, the base for my CNC machine all cut out. My friend cut that on the uh, table saw uh, this week, so I really have no excuse not to finish it now. Anyway, as I said, please uh, like and uh, subscribe and uh, check back for to see more progress with this watering system, uh, which I'm sure will grow as the summer goes on. And I'm just going to leave this video in the middle of a sentence. Goodbye.